Okay, so in this particular chapter, we'll talk about Network File Store, which is basically an NFS system that is provided by GCP. So in this example, what we'll do is we'll create two instances and we'll connect both these two instances to the same Network File Store. And using this, you can have multiple instances connected to the same file store. And it's possible for these instances to access the same file. So let's see how we can do that. Now, before doing it, it's very important for you to understand how the pricing works. So there are three elements to your file store pricing. Now this particular link I will give in the description below. So before you create your file store, you must understand how the pricing works. So the first element is basically the service tier that you use. So you have an option of choosing between your hard disk drive or your SSD, or it can either even be an enterprise or a high level SSD. Now based on which particular service you're using, the pricing would be different. The cheapest available here is the HDD. So the second and the most important factor is basically the instance capacity. So whenever you create your file store, you have to basically allocate a amount of data and you're basically charged on that particular allocated amount of data. So let's say you've allocated around one terabyte and you've only used around two GB of that particular one terabyte, you would still be charged for that one terabyte. So this is something you need to understand. And this plays a crucial role in your pricing. And the third is basically the region. So the location where your instance is provisioned also also decides the pricing of your particular file store. So let's go ahead and let's create a file store. Okay, so I'm back in my console. So let's go to our dashboard and underneath your storage, you'll find your file store. So what you need to do is you need to click on instances here and you need to create an instance of your file store. So let's click on instance. So I'll just call this as my file store. So I'll just let it be as basic. So you also have the option of choosing between enterprise and high scale. So if you click on enterprise, you can see that the pricing here increases. So for this particular example, let's just choose the basic. So it's just a general purpose NFS storage system. And then you have to choose between HHT and the SSD. So let's choose the hard disk drive for this and let's choose the minimum capacity. So you have to at least provision one terabyte of data. And if you go through this particular list here, you can see how much the monthly cost would be for your file store instance. So what I'll do is once I've created it, once I've shown you the demo, I'll immediately delete it so that I do not incur any extra charges. And I'll also create it in US Central one. And here another important thing to note is the network with which your file store is associated. So I have associated it with the default network. So if you've created a new network, you can also associate it with that particular network. So currently I have just one particular VPC in my particular project. So that's important for you to know. And what it'll do is it'll also allocate an IP address for this particular file store. And that IP address we will use while connecting it to our instance. So let's just choose this particular use as automatically allocated IP. And let's also give a name for our file store. So let's just call this as my file store. So this will come in handy while we are connecting it to the instance. So let's click on create. Okay, so a file store has been created. So the important thing for you to note is basically the file share name, this one, and the IP address. So this is basically an IP address within our default network. So these two information that we, we would need while connecting it to the instance. So let's go back to our VM instances. So what I'll do is I will log into both these two instances and I'll try to connect both these two instances to the same file share. So let's do that. So there is a very important documentation that I want you to go through. So here it shows you how you can do that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install this particular NFS common library. So let's do that. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and I will SSH into our machine and I will download these two libraries. So let's do that. So this is my instance one. So let's run this. And similarly, I'll do this for instance two as well. So this is my instance two. So again, this particular documentation I'll give in the description below. So once you've done that, the next thing that you need to do is you need to create a directory. And this is basically the default directory that I'll create. That is under MNT, I'll create a directory called test. So let's do that. So let's copy this and let's run it in both the terminals as well. Okay, so I've created a directory called test under MNT. So let's go to that particular path. Okay, so after that, the next command that I need to run is the sudo mount command. And here I need to mention the IP address and also the name of my file share. So let's copy this. So what I need to do here is I need to change the IP address. So this is the IP address. Let me copy this and let's paste it here. 
And similarly, this particular file share name, let me copy this and let's replace it with the volume one. Okay, so once I've done that, let's copy this and let's mount our file share on this particular part. So let's copy this. Okay, once that is done, the final thing that you need to do is you need to give it the read write permission. So let's copy this again and let's run this command as well. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll just run the df dot command and this df dot command gives me all the information I need. So you can see that this particular path is mounted on my particular file store which is on this particular IP address. So this is all the specific information that I need. So I will run these same commands that is basically the mount command as well as the chmod command on my instance two as well. So let me do that. Okay, so I was able to run the same command on my instance two as well. So now again, if I do a df dot on my instance two, you can see that it's pointing to the same file store. Okay, so the final thing that I'll do is under my MNT test, I'll create a file called touch abc. And this particular file, because it's mounted on that particular file store, should be available on my instance one as well. So let's do an ls. So you can see that there's a file called abc in my instance two. And again, let's do a df dot and you can see that it's mounted on this particular file store. So if I were to access my MNT test on my instance one, I should be able to view this particular file as well. So let's go and check if that's possible. So here I'm in my instance one. So let's clear the screen and let's go to our MNT. And again, let's do a df dot and you can see that it's pointed to the same file store and let's do an ls here. And you can see that that particular file that we had created in our instance two is present in our instance one as well. So similarly, what I'll do is in my instance one, I'll create a file called XYZ. And this particular file should be available in our instance two as well. So again, I'm back in my instance two. Let's do an LS now. And you can see that there's a file called XYZ. So that is how you can have multiple instances pointing to the same file store. Okay, so now that you've done this, let's delete our file store. Let's go back to our instance. And let's delete this. Click on my file store. And let's click on delete. So this particular file store is being deleted now. So some of the important use cases of your file store includes your enterprise application migration, your financial services and technologies. So media rendering is also another important use case where you can have your media file stored in your file store and which can be accessed by compute engine instances. Similarly, you can do the same for your web content management as well, where you can store your web content within your file store and these can be accessed by your instances. So this particular documentation, again, I will give in the description below. So I hope this was a useful lecture. I will see you in the next.